All right, I really think you're gonna wanna hear me on this one. So let's not waste time, let's go. What is going on you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And hey, if you are new here, welcome to the community. Really love having you and your time and attention. Now on this one, we're doing something a little bit different. And for those of you who are regulars around here, you might notice something a little different, probably with the camera setup. And that is because I am filming right now on the iPhone SE 2. Now, of course, coming from being an Android user, I've been talking a lot about the iPhone SE 2 as probably the phone of 2020. And of course, I did a video on that and certainly will link that up if you wanna check it out. So, like I said, I've never used an iPhone before the SE 2. The thing is, for the community out here, I've had so many of you reaching out to me about your budgets when it comes to a camera. You wanna get started with photography or filmmaking and specifically doing YouTube. And many of you are saying like, I'm just waiting until I save up enough money to get something like this. And I've talked about the A6400 time and time again. And this is a beast of a camera when it comes to YouTube, professional work, personal work, photos, video. I love this camera, so I cannot deny your yearning or desire to want to have something like this. I love this camera. However, if you are not getting started with your creativity because you don't have a camera like this, well, I'm telling you what, if you've got a smartphone sitting in your pocket or if you're watching me right now on your smartphone, you have got a good start to have the main tool to get things going for you. Now, of course, this is basically what I'm looking at right now. So just, it's kind of weird because I'm not seeing myself and I do always recommend using the rear facing camera, especially on these iPhones, because you're going to get more megapixels with the rear facing camera on this particular setup. But definitely check your camera situation because you may be able to flip the camera for the front facing and then have a monitor. Before we get into the camera app and the software itself, let's actually talk about some of the accessories or the hardware rather to help you get you to that level that you really could be achieving some good quality content. Now, of course, first and foremost, I am controlling my lighting and I did a video on budget lighting setup. Now, of course, I am lighting myself with my Aperture Light Dome and my Godox SL60 and of course have my blinds pulled. So I'm controlling the lighting and that's one of the things that you wanna be mindful of. And like I said, I will link that video up that I did on budget lighting for like 20, 30 bucks and you're in and a few things around your house to just be able to light your face in a studio setup like this. And then of course, for the camera itself, you're going to need at least a tripod, something like this that you can set up on a tabletop or like I have this kind of YouTube somewhat elaborate setup and I did a video on this and I will I will link that up as well, just so you can check it out. But I have the iPhone setting up on this particular tripod that's kind of an all-in-one system, but you don't need it. You could just use something as simple as this to mount your camera on. And of course, getting a smartphone uh, mount for the camera itself. Now, one of the things is, is we know we have a very capable camera in the iPhone SE 2 here, but what we want to make sure of is our audio being dialed in. And of course I did a video on audio, I've done several videos on audio, but specifically I actually have the Rode Video Micro here and I feature that in a lot of videos. And what I do is I have this running down this arm and using an extension uh, cable that goes right into the iPhone. So the iPhone actually has the lightning to three and a half millimeter adapter and then what is going out of that is the extension audio cable, the three and a half millimeter going into that, going into the microphone. But here's the thing. So let's actually kind of break this down. It's the microphone. And then I have a patch cable that is a TRRS cable that has the three rings uh, at the end. And then the audio cable that's extending to the lightning adapter that is also a TRRS cable. And one of the reasons why I recommend the audio over top of you is that when it's further away from you, when the microphone is further away from you, you get a lot of the room noise. And so having it right over you, you're going to get the best audio pickup that you can. And in that video that I did, I will link up a very inexpensive boom arm that you could literally have out of your shot, but then be able to have your microphone just out of the shot, but 
right to where your voice is projecting. Now, something that I do wanna quickly point out here when we talk about this particular audio setup is that we do have several points of failure because we have the patch cable coming out of the microphone, the patch cable then being connected into the female connector of the audio extension cable, then the three and a half millimeter going into the lightning adapter, and then of course the lightning adapter going into the phone itself. So there are multiple points of failure there and I would make sure that everything is secure and you've dialed it in and then double check to test that your audio is where it needs to be before you start recording like 20, 30 minutes of talking head realizing something got unplugged. Now, of course, audio dialed in, we need to get into the camera and of course the iPhone being a very capable camera, same thing with a lot of these Android phones, but the baked in software camera app, the one that comes with it, the native ones, you don't get a lot of customization. There's a lot of auto functions there. We want to have the freedom to be able to adjust the specifics of the camera for our photography and filmmaking. So a small investment for the Moment camera app for iPhone, I think is well worth it. Now, I typically like to shoot in 4K. However, consider this. Now, of course, you can, you can edit on your iPhone and I'll do a video about that but I tend to edit on my Mac using Final Cut Pro and I can handle 4K footage no problem. So you may wanna think about these larger file sizes for 4K, but I typically like to shoot in 4K and then I also love filming in 24 frames per second. I just think that it's a, a better look and that is my opinion and I just prefer 24 frames. Now moving over, once we are at 24 frames, something else that we need to consider is our shutter speed. So we don't want it automatically adjusting, especially in this situation where things are pretty controlled. So we're gonna use the 180 rule and then kick that up to one over 48, or if your particular camera setup is only allowing you to go one over 50, that's totally fine. Now the ISO is something else that I don't like it having to be adjusted constantly, especially in a studio setup. So I'm going to adjust my ISO to around 100 in this setting based on what I know that this light is putting out and what's going on in the studio. But you could use auto ISO if you need to, if you, especially when you're outside and you need it to adjust. But essentially in this setup, I'm gonna just keep my ISO at around 100. And of course, moving over to autofocus, I think, you know, I typically use autofocus on my A6400, especially for the talking head, and it has that face detection. So I do use uh, continuous autofocus. And in this setup, I think that's where we need to be. Although you could go to manual focus if you know that you have a very fixed focal length or where your subject is or what you're filming, you could go manual focus and just kind of touch the screen based on dialing in where you need it to be dialed into or adjusting manually. Autofocus is fine. Now, of course, lastly, and I think probably one of the more important things is your white balance. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with using the auto white balance, especially if you're vlogging or you're out and about and you're going from inside to outside or uh, to dimly lit areas and the lighting is changing. And so that might not be a bad idea, but in this setting, I know exactly what my lamp is putting out. I know what color I need to have things at as far as the light is concerned. And I know that that as daylight. So I know what Kelvin I need to be at on my white balance. So that'll definitely help me when it comes to my post-production. So again, auto white balance is, it's not bad, but again, in a particular studio like this where I know what that's supposed to be, I love having control over that. And of course, lastly, a little bit of a bonus here, and this is something that if you wanted to invest in to kind of level up your filmmaking, and I'm gonna be doing more testing on these Moment lenses, but I do have a Moment case for the iPhone, and I can attach this lens to give me a wider field of view. So let's actually try it. So here we go, the studio, wider setup. I'm not sure if you can actually see the microphone or a little bit more in the background, but if this is something that you wanna set up to where you don't want the camera so far away from you, you want it a little bit closer, but you wanna be able to capture a bit more in the background or the subject or whatever, I really recommend these lenses thus far, but again, I'm gonna be vlogging with this, getting some B-roll and doing some more cinematic uh, filming with these lens setups, but Again, if it's something that you're thinking about investing in, although I don't go, don't go out and spend any more money than you have to just to get started, 
but if you feel like you've got the budget for it, this may be a good next step for you. So let's get out of here on this one. I really appreciate your time and attention. What questions can I answer for you folks? I'd really love to have those conversations below. As always, you go out there, do those things that matter. You get out there and you go rock some faces. I'm gonna keep creating some content here, some value for you. And until next time, I will catch you right back here on the next one.